but you could look industry by industry and say like, does this make sense to return? I know, for example, we're actually invested in Taiwan Semiconductor. I know that they're going to start to build a plant here. Maybe you can look at opportunities like that, but I don't know at the really granular level right off the bat where that opportunity is yet. It'll be there though, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Foreign, foreign listed companies like TSMC that have ADRs here that maybe get the benefit of sort of that right. warm, fuzzy U.S. feel when they announce a multi-billion dollar factory there. All right, Jenny, yesterday, of course, a 900 point game. I don't know if you heard about this, Jenny, but the Dow roared 900 points yesterday. You may have missed that. Do you think yeah, that that momentum is going to follow? <laughs> Was that a major turn or sort of a one day pop because we had some positive data around vaccines and some new numbers around the virus, et cetera? So we've thought about a lot about this over the last 24 hours. And if you reflect back to maybe about six weeks ago on that big Friday when the remdesivir great news came out, the market was up about 3% then and then faded about 5% in the following days. I think this is a little different because that was a therapeutic and this ultimately will be a cure. But I do think that we see a very emotional market that's just latching on and desperate for good news and trying to get trying to get something. So I suspect that we do fade a bit off of this. The next major data point that's likely to come out on this vaccine is going to be in July when the phase two trial data comes out. So it might be a while. And I think that we're just gonna roller coaster through this, like latching on to good news, freaking out over bad news. Um, earlier you were talking about the fact that the market's essentially flat since April. And that's, that's, I think, pretty mm -hmm. healthy. I think we're in this consolidation phase. I think what the Fed's done has put a floor on it. And for me, at least, I feel better about seeing it flat over the last month than if we were up, 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 or plunging down. Flat seems like a nice way for price discovery to come into individual stocks, to see sectors and industries start to rationalize after the carnage of March. That's a great point. And if we could bring up maybe a one year chart of the Dow or year to day chart of the Dow. In fact, for our viewers that don't know what we're talking about, a roller coaster you reference, it's a good reference, Jenny, because they start and stop in the same place, hopefully, of course. And, you know, right. and after we saw that good huge point. decline, <laughs> a bounce back, hard to believe, but the Dow is exactly where it was at its high on April 28th. I mean, here it is, May 18th, you know, basically three weeks in, and the market has just kind of done this. Ultimately, to your point, that consolidation, that type of let's find a base, let's take a breather, let's think about this logically and not react emotionally, that can often be a longer term positive. Right. I agree. Building the base, right? Yeah, and we are building that. Where do you think we should build the base off, Jenny? What are the best stocks, best places in the market with sure. to build that base? Sure. So I think what's interesting is how wide the disparity is between the haves and have nots. And I suspect that the next leg up in the market won't be driven by the by the winners so far, but rather will be the ones that have lagged, that have really solid businesses, really solid cash flows, well managed, that actually reported earnings over the past quarter, that were quite decent and saw, saw um, continued strong cash flows. I think that those guys might be able to start to come up. So for example, companies like American Express trading at 13 times earnings, Pfizer trading at 13 times, Verizon trading at 12 times, versus say a MasterCard at 19 times, a BlackRock at 19, sorry, MasterCard at 37 times, BlackRock at 19 times multiples. I think those lower multiple stocks that have been the have nots, I think that they might start to build. There's also opportunity in companies like IBM or smaller ones, maybe like Viacom or Unum, which I added to the portfolio um, just last week, or Seagate. These are all companies that have multiples, price to earnings multiples way below the market, but they have really solid businesses and great cash flows. I think as this base builds, those those could start to see a little bit of multiple expansion, a little bit of appreciation, start to cement that foundation under the market further for when we do start to recover and see a real next leg up.